in that those feud days. with Bruno solidified everything. Yeah, and it did. It was great. So, how do you feel about Ric Flair's comments when he said Bruno can only sell out the Garden and a little part of the Northeast, and he couldn't transition to any <laughs> other territory? What are your feelings about that comment? Oh well, Bruno wasn't a big Flair fan. I mean, to Bruno, Flair is a routine guy. You've seen one match, you've seen them all. What's your feeling on Flair? Well, I mean, you gotta give Flair credit. Oh, I, I mean, Flair's yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, Flair's you know, obviously one of the great ones. He, he had a career that spanned a long time. I'm amazed how long he went physically. I mean, even you know, I did broadcasting for ten years. Rick was still wrestling, <laughs> right? But uh, I think there was just some. Some things, you know, Flair might have said when, when Bruno hears it, then Bruno gets mad and says stuff back. Did but you, Bruno didn't really care too much for Flair in terms of being all that great. He was a, a routine guy, colorful guy, could talk great, you know, but uh, did you, you feel, can't take nothing away from Rick either. Did Rick you feel did Bruno got a little bitter towards the end because of the money these guys were making in the, in the mid-80s? The business changed the so business much. The business changed after Hogan so came much. to WWF. Must have been a shock well, it Bruno. changed a lot. It's not that he got bitter. You know what it was with some of the old timers? It was almost kind of an humiliating embarrassment where they wanted to hide because they spent their whole lives to the point of not having friends, not talking to your wife. You don't, you didn't, mm-hmm. you never smartened your wife up. Mm-hmm. Their families, you never smartened your family. Nobody. Right. So they came from a totally different philosophy, Vern and Bruno and Crutch and all the old sure. school guys. Mm-hmm. So when, when the when the business was changing, and it wasn't no one specifically that changed the business, humanity changed. Right. You know, humanity now where 20 years ago you'd vote for the president or the vice president, you know, but nowadays no one believes in politicians. Mm. They're all smart to all the... I'm running. You didn't hear They're me. all smart to the corruption of the politicians yeah, and what really goes on in Washington. And yeah. I'm glad Trump's draining the swamp. <laughs> you know, but, but, but back then, so... <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Someone's that. gonna be t- someone's doing texting you now. I'm with you. Everything's fine. But someone's Larry, I used to be a fan. No longer. Woo! <laughs> uh, yeah. So it, it just got to a point where <laughs> the fans were humanity was changing, and the old timers didn't want them to lose that belief because they knew if the fans believe this is real, we'll make right. more money and it'll be better. Right. But it was going the other way out of a natural progression of humanity. How did you feel when kayfabe? You know. How did, well, you, how did that make you feel? I was in the generation that kind of went, I was one of the old, last of the old school mentality yeah, guys, yeah. but I was going through an era where it was changing. And the one thing I noticed, because I'd be listening to matches before my match, like in the AWA and NWA, people would start once in a while, go, oh, boring, because now they're starting <laughs> yeah. to get smart. Yeah, that was but good. I could go out there, yeah, and they good. would chant, Larry sucked, and I knew yeah. how to work them to it. They were booing it, and there'd be riots. Yeah. The and 16 all minute stall. I'd come in, <laughs> I'd come in after a match. The Road Warriors would say, "Oh my God, oh, what an easy crowd this is!" Because right. it was, you know. Right. And then they go out. The match was dead quiet. Yeah. And then wow. they come back, and the Hawk would be bitching. Right. Well, yeah, what? You said it was an easy house out.